Hi, my name is Crystal Guerrero. We're Team 4, and we're doing our project on UAB. Hi, my name is Rahim Aliki, and uh, UAB has long since existed before the first manned flight in 1903. Uh, UAB, there are different classifications of UAB. You can classify them, they are range, endurance, and size. Now, the first UAV was built in 1863 by a man named Charles Curley. His idea was to get a hot air balloon to get bombs over the horizon. But this idea was flawed because they couldn't quite measure the speed of uh, wind speed and things like that. So, it was a very, very uh, more or less catastrophic uh, UAV. Now, the next UAV was uh, in 1883 by a man named Dobbin. Atibal. He was experimenting with kite and wind and he took the first aerial photographs. Now, Corporal William Eddy from the US Army saw his invention and kind of gave him the idea to use the UAV for surveillance to, to get pictures of enemy placements and things like that. Up next, we have the Catherine aerial torpedo designed by Charles F. Catherine from Ford. Now these torpedoes were made primarily of wood and were, were powered by Ford's uh, 40 HP engines. They could attain a speed of 80 km per hour and the way they worked was that when the, the um, UAV reached its designated area, the, wind, the wings came up and the torpedoes struck the ground and exploded upon impact. Up next we have the Queen Bee which was used primarily by the British Royal Air Force and the British Royal Navy. Now, the Queen Bee was the first UAV that was reusable. It had wheels, so it could take off and land. It was used primarily as target practice, and it could attain a speed of 161 kilometers per hour and cover a range of 483 kilometers. Up next, we have the ATUM 34 Rand Fire B. It was the first. This was the first stealth UAV design. It was designed to be used primarily by the CIA and the U.S. Air Force. And it was designed by Ryan Aeronautical and it could attain a speed of 1,140 kilometers per hour, an endurance of 1 hour 15 minutes, and a range of 18,300 meters. Up next, we have the Lockheed V-21 UAV, which is this one right here. It's currently the fastest UAV ever created. It could attain a speed of Mach 4. And the UAV was primarily designed to be carried by the uh, 812 Blackbird. When they couple together, they become the M21, but separately, that is known primarily as the Blackbird. Now, UAVs have also been incorporated into the civilian sectors. We have different uses of the UAVs. We are, right now, UAVs are used for photography and things like that, but right now I'm going to go over some of the military uses of UAV. Now you have the Predator, the Predator drone, which is one of the most common military UAVs. It was designed by General Atomics, and it had an altitude limit of 7,620 and a duration of 25 hours, and a speed of 228 kph. Now this was primarily designed to be a surveillance UAV, but over time it has been modified to carry two ADM two or more AGM-114 L5 missiles. Next, we have the IG-7 Shadow. This is a real launch UAV and used primarily for reconnaissance and forward resupply. This could hold two canisters of 20 kgs each to, I say again, 20 pounds each to deliver to the troops up front. So it could deliver small packages of uh, medical supplies and rations and things like that. This has an endurance of 5 hours, a range of 78 kilometers, and a speed of 207 kilometers per hour. Up next, we have the IQ-14 Dragon Eye. This, was, this is one of the smaller UAVs currently used by the U.S. Marine Corps. It weighs about 5.9 pounds, has a range of 5 kilometers, and, and it's, it's used primarily for reconnaissance. So, without further ado, Says Crystal. She's going to be giving you. 
Hi, thank you. I'll be talking about the future of UAVs. Um, currently, excuse me, in our, um, excuse me. <laughs> uh, in the future, there, there's going to be about 30,000 UAVs available um, flying in the air by about 2030. And the technology, technology is growing so quickly that these, um, that the UAVs are inedible in our future. In police work, um, this is so important because of surveillance and definitely um, finding criminals. The FBI has actually admitted to using uh, UAVs in the United States. And there are actually some police departments that have been given permission by the FBI by the FAA to use um, UAV. <laughs> um, actually, there are current police departments um, that actually the L LAPD is actually creating, uh, designing a, a sky feeder, and this is actually one that they're currently using in LAPD, but they are wanting to advance it so um, they can bring the current rate down in Los Angeles. And in our, in our, in the farms, um, they're being widely used um, using GPS, and drones are able to water crops, treat crops, and treat them with different chemicals. A farmer wouldn't usually be able to have the bird's eye view uh, like a drone, so um, this gives the farmer an advantage um, so they can check their crops and make sure everything is growing well and there's no diseases or any bacteria that are growing on the plants. And as you can see here, in China, they're actually using UAVs currently to water and treat crops with different chemicals and pesticides, and even take samples of the, of the crops to make sure they're growing healthy. And um, not only in crops, but UAVs are being used with livestock, like um, cattle, uh, making sure that they're healthy, and um, taking, excuse me, taking blood and making sure that they're, um, making sure that they're healthy. Then we have um, administration fields, such as um, there are many countries, such as the UK, uh, China, Germany, um, that are using drones for everything. Uh, the, U the USA is actually staying behind because the FAA does not um, want to push, um, excuse me, does not want to push um, UAV into the public. Um, the, but companies like DHL, Amazon, UPS, and Google, <coughs> Google um, aren't staying behind. They're going to other countries doing research. Like CSL is actually has their own prototype that um, can take packages, and Google's actually creating a UAV so um, it can excuse me, so it can take um, medical supplies and um, defibrillators to uh, people with heart that have heart attacks and many other uses that are being. Um, that are being researched. Um, this isn't in our near future, but hopefully we will be able to see this soon. And then we have our UAC CAD design. Um, we want this design to move forward, and this design is so it can be used in disaster situations. So as you can see, the yellow hatch is where uh, medical supplies and survivor kits will come out. From, so it can um, help the people in stress when they get stuck in hurricanes, tsunamis, earthquakes, and any disaster situation where it's hard for humans to get
get to and to get to um, excuse me to get to in a safe manner. So UAVs would be a great um, would be great in those type of situations. And thank you guys so much. Um, my name was Crystal Guerrero, and my partner was Raheem. And if you have any questions, please contact us at this email. Thank you so much.